Thanks, Gary. Um, thank you all for coming and, and being part of our media day here with the Big Ten Conference. I'd like to start by welcoming our new commissioner, Commissioner Petiti. It's uh, it's been a it's been a great start. Really fun to work with. I think he really uh, is a great listener and trying to figure out exactly what's best for for the Big Ten Conference, and that, after all, is what we're here for. So uh, I consider an honor and a privilege to represent Rutgers here at uh, the Big Ten Media Day. Uh, I want to thank our president, Jonathan Holloway, and our athletic director, Pat Hobbs, for all the support that they give our program and our players and our coaches. Really, really proud of the three players that uh, came along with us. Uh, Deion Jennings, linebacker, is uh, a six-year senior, really a special player. Aaron Lewis. Um, another guy that's just uh, the Energizer Bunny, brings it to our team every day. And uh, Johnny Langan, who's a tight end with us and uh, just a super young man. And as a head coach, when, you're, when your best players are your hardest workers, that really is a nice spot to be in. And I'm, I'm very pleased with these guys. This is my 15th, years, 15th year at Rutgers, uh, 11 the first time, I'm going on my fourth uh, the second time. And I can honestly tell you that I've never been more excited to be the head coach at Rutgers University. I love what we're doing. Uh, I love the, the culture that we're building in our program. I love our players, our coaching staff. And, uh, you know, I'm excited about the way that we're handling business both on the field and off. We had, uh, I heard Brett say they had the highest GPA. Uh, I can brag the same. We had the highest GPA in, in program history. And uh, I'm very proud of that over 3.0 as a collective team. Uh, and that's something that's very important to me when we're entrusted with these young people's lives. Certainly football is a big, big part of it, but we know that football ends and that their life continues on after football. And I think what they learn, not only in the classroom, but in all areas, being with us is important time in their development. I always tell families when they come on visits, other than that time when you're an infant, I think this is the, the biggest time of development in your life. 18 to 22 years old, when you're figuring out what kind of adult you want to be, what's going to be the basis of who you are. So excited about the program. Uh, recruiting's gone well. You know, we're a developmental program, and uh, I think I, I say that often. I think people don't really understand always what that means. You know, we're not getting a ton of guys that are walking in the door ready to perform in the Big Ten Conference on, on their rookie year, on their freshman year. There's a few, but uh, we're a developmental program. We need to get them in the pipeline. We need to develop them in the strength and conditioning area, nutrition, uh, learn the culture, and then what happens is as we build and build and build, the pipeline begins to become full. And we're approaching that now, where we have 22, 21, 23 year olds that are grown men. And when those guys are your best players and they play their best football at 22 years old, that's when you start to have success at a place like Rutgers. That's what we did the first time. And uh, it certainly is the plan here going forward this time. So uh, I think one of the most important things being at at Rutgers University is know who we are and know that we have to be different. And that's okay. I love that. I love being in that position. And like I said, never been more excited than I am today to be the head coach at Rutgers. So with that, I'll open it up for questions. Right here. Greg, Chris Eisman, Bergen Record. Um, I know this is about 2023, but just looking ahead to next year with the elimination of divisions, the addition of USC, UCLA, how do you feel like that's going to impact your program? Well, you're right. 23 is the, the, the thing that I'm focused on. You know, our, getting a look at it, it really didn't change much for us in 24. So it's not going to be any different, really. Uh, moving forward, I'm sure it will be. And, and we'll worry about that when it's time. This 23 season uh, and really training camp is, is what's my focus right now. We have some questions over here to our left. Hi, Scott Docterman with The Athletic. Uh, Greg, when you came back to Rutgers, uh, I think there was a 15-game losing streak that the program had with, against Big Ten competition. What was something that you thought you needed to change within the program, whether it was mindset or development, to try to put you in the right direction uh, and be competitive within the Big Ten? That's a great question. Um, you know, it's a little different in our situation because I had been there 11 years before I had left. And then I had been away for eight years. And I was a little bit shocked how much things had changed. And I'm not just talking about the athletes or the football. I'm talking about the infrastructure. 
So we had to really rebuild a lot of the things, whether it's medical coverage, the way the players ate, nutrition, uh, training, all that. Th and you know what? That's I didn't complain at all because you know what? That you know when you're taking a job, what has to get done. And you know, I think we're in a great place right now. I think our our support for our student athletes is unparalleled in college football what we do for the players and I'm proud to say that and I think our guys know that it's one of the reasons that uh, in this age of transfer portal and those things our guys are are staying put and uh, you know the minute you say that you might lose a guy but I really feel like those things had to be rebuilt while simultaneously the recruiting and developing of the players in our program so it's a lot to do but uh, certainly I feel like we're right where we need to be moving forward we'll go in the back to our left Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald. Good morning, Coach. What is one thing that you would change about either the current NIL or transfer portal landscape if you could do it tomorrow? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of things. So, get, choosing one is the, is the tough part, right? Somehow, somehow, if the universities could control more of the NIL, just so there's uniformity and we don't have all the third parties that are involved. And that's not to, look, no one's doing it other than the third parties right now. So I'm grateful, right? Because without them, we'd be in big trouble. But I just don't see that being, you know, if you look at most other businesses, that's not the way it works, right? That there's someone else that has a totally different, oftentimes, not, not always, different vested interest. I just believe that uh, somehow we, had, we need to bring that back in house. How you do that, there's gonna be people that have to decide that other than, other than I, I gotta coach a team. But I do believe that we have to get somehow get our arms back around it. But right now, you know, I have a saying under my desk. It says, if you don't like it, dot, 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 change it or change the way you think about it. So uh, I'm not going to change it single handedly. So I had to change the way I think about it. And that's that's how I've approached it. We'll go over to our right coach. Hey, coach Pat Lanny, Angie.com. Good to see you. Uh, you talked about being different. I'm curious, what's the biggest challenge you still face at Rutgers? Well, I think number one, the biggest challenge, you look around at, at, at the logos on that wall, right? We play in the best conference in America. So we have to build a program that can compete at that level and then someday be a championship level program. So how do you do that? You do that one step at a time. You recruit the right players and you develop them. And to me, that's it. And when part of the development is all the things that surround them. Right, Like I mentioned, nutrition, strength and conditioning, mental health, physical health, equipment, all the areas. Because then the football part, you know, that's what they love. That's why they're there and they want to play. They're, they're dying to do that. It's the other things that you have to, because again, if, we're, if we know who we are, we have to develop our guys and get them to the end, end of their career where they're playing their best football. That's how we'll win there. We're going to stay right over here. Matt Shelton from Wildcat Report. Uh, how will your preparation change for Northwestern after the firing of Pat Fitzgerald and then the promotion of David Braun to interim head coach? That's a good question. Um, I don't think as much maybe as if it was a total overhaul, right? So Mike Bajakian is the coordinator there. He's been there. I think that's going to remain similar. And then defensively, um, you know, he didn't, they didn't bring him in to be the defensive coordinator to run somebody else's defense. So now he's the head coach as well. So I think we're going to get what we were studying and getting prepared for. You know, the biggest thing in my career is make sure your own team's ready. That's, that's our challenge. Is I, I, I need to make sure that Rutgers is ready on the third because uh, I know that Northwestern's going to show up and we need to make sure that we do. We'll go over here to our right and then I've got you in the back. Coach, David Gold, inside on you. When your first tenure at Rutgers, you had a lot of local kids um, stay in state to help lead the program. How important is it to keep those kids from Don Bosco and Bergen Catholic in state to help grow this program? Well, it's always important to recruit your backyard. There's no doubt about that. Um, but it, the most important thing is you get the right players that fit your culture and that are gifted enough to play and, and compete and win in the Big Ten Conference. So if you look at our program the first time, at first it wasn't cool to go to Rutgers back in 2000, 2001, 2002. So we recruited all over the place to get the right people to fit our program. Then when we won, all of a sudden the local guys, then it was cool to go to Rutgers. And again, has that happened a little bit? Yeah, but I, I feel confident that in our local area, the New Jersey, New York area, which is our backyard, that we're going to consistently recruit the best players. Will we get them all? No. 
but I'm not worried about that. You know, I learned a long time ago, Coach Paterno always used to say, don't worry about the ones you don't get. Make sure you love coaching the ones you do get. And that's what I live by. And we'll have a final question over here in the back. Dustin Schutte, Indiana Sports Beat. Uh, Greg, you made a coaching change. Uh, offensive coordinator Kirk Shiraka. Uh, what does he bring to your program? What kind of differences do you hope to see on the field from the offensive unit this year? Yeah, it's a great uh, question. Kirk Shiraka is a, is a veteran coach, one that I know very well. He was on our staff at Rutgers the first go-round. Um, he brings experience. He brings clarity. Um, knows exactly what he wants to do. And... I think he does a great job leading and managing our staff. So I'm excited. I, I enjoy uh, going to work every day. I enjoy being with him. Um, he's just a true professional. And thank God we have him, right? Because my job has changed so much just in the last year. You know, between Kirk Shiraka and Joe Harris Simiak, our two uh, coordinators, I couldn't be more pleased. It's the best staff that I've been on in my whole career. And uh, again, thank goodness because a lot of my time now is spent on NIL and those type of things that have very little to do with offense or defense. And uh, if, if they weren't there, I don't know what would give. So I'm very appreciative and, and fortunate and blessed to have them in our program. Good? I believe we're good.